about the time. And, and Dave, thank you for joining us as usual. Yep, I'll, I'll, uh, so. I'll keep my ears open and I'll uh, raise my hand if I, yeah. I, I yeah. think of anything that I can add. Yeah, Please and, do. Yeah, and that yeah. kind of goes for everybody uh, this evening. Uh, again, welcome uh, to the Sunday night webinar. Uh, this is October 20th, and uh, it is Web 104. I'm Gene Colbago. I'm Roger Carroll. And we welcome you to this. It's uh, Tonight's topic is going to be ELL, and uh, we will start with that in just a, a minute or two. Uh, but uh, I uh, imposed on Raj for just a minute to, since we have a lot of people who are uh, relatively new to the webinars, uh, you know, we have a lot of good names and we have some some people we see regularly and we're glad for them too. But we want to just mention this. Uh, one of the things that we are very interested in is uh, uh, helping teachers build personal learning networks, PLNs, and uh, basically that's uh, a way of you know, staying current in the classroom because things are changing regularly. And uh, Raj and I uh, each week get probably literally hundreds of uh, ideas, uh, messages, topics, articles, resources, and we try to share some of them with you. And one of the places that we go to, if you're not familiar with this, on the Teacher Resource Center, there is a page over here on the left-hand side called Building Professional Learning Networks. And we re uh, really uh, invite you to go there. Uh, you don't have to do this in a formal way if you want to learn more about a PLN. We have a flipboard here that has many articles on what they are, how to get started out of them. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to join groups and collaborations and so forth. That's a good thing, of course, but you can do it individually. And uh, one of the things that we do, uh, we have several, as we go down, you know, just kind of mosing down, we have several flipboards for teachers and flipboards are just classroom, uh, or excuse me, resources that we have picked up, we have, you know, shared with you and here's kind of one of them, classroom resources for your PLN. We recommend, take a look at that, I, you know, I throw things in there uh, weekly, Raj does, uh, and if you click on that Read Magazine, you'll find, I think we're getting, oh golly, upwards of eight or 800 articles. I don't remember exactly, but some of them are really good. And down below, these are some articles that we have found dealing with technology in the classroom that might be of use to you. Most of them are very easy. They're non-technical. You can read them in a matter of a minute or two, so forth and so on. Up here we have blogs for teachers where you can join. We also have Office 365 resources. Raj is going to talk, I think, a great deal tonight about Office 365 and how it can be used in the uh, in, in ELL. Uh, but one, just real quickly, two sites that I might recommend that you take a look at and you might even subscribe to. First one is called Smart Classroom Management. This is a really great site and you can click here, just put in your name and your email and they'll send you, oh, it's, I think it's maybe once a week, each time a new article comes out and they're fairly simple, are uh, fairly short articles, very easy to read, good ideas. Uh, about topics that might be of interest to you. How to handle a student who rejects your kindness is the latest, just came out. Uh, just, just browsing down, how to handle students who complain, how to have the best behaved class in the school. And these aren't really, you know, involved and so forth. These are some of the ones that are just, uh, you know, a little known trait every teacher needs. Oh, oh got to click on that one. Uh, but over here on the right is the archive and you can take a look at a lot of these great articles and you know as I said before they're not very long you know just to click on this to show you uh, it's a short article that's it okay 
and some ideas, maybe a link or two. And down below, there are some teachers who have responded and offered some suggestions as well. So again, uh, smart classroom management. You're gonna say, how do I remember that? Well, let me stop for a second and remind you that over on your little control panel, you'll see one thing that says handouts. And there are four handouts tonight. One of them will have the list of these sites that I'm mentioning. And there are three others. Two are Roger's, two are mine. Roger will be explaining his in just a minute. But we recommend that you download those. And if you don't, uh, in a few days, uh, we will be putting up a video of this webinar. Uh, and I will put up uh, links to these sites as well. The second site that is really, really one that has a great deal of resources, yeah, they have some deals in shopping and they do have some articles that are for sale, okay? But uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but you're going to have to read this one. 13 ways to bring, have you ever seen this word before, Raj? Yes, I've mistyped it several times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's about it. But it's, I uh, think it says huge. You no, know, it's not Billy Fusilla. Uh, I want to bring huge to my class. No, it's actually, or, I, it's, uh, I forget, Danish, Norwegian or something. Uh, uh, if you click on that and read it, it'll tell you what it is. And it, it's actually a really good article. Uh, and again, I know. Uh, yeah, they have printable reading things. It's bringing IKEA. In, yes, yeah, you got it, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Classroom ideas, uh, you know, Halloween games, minimalist guy, and that's me. Uh, this one I like. We love these free music resources for teachers. And uh, these aren't the only ones. You know, notice the view all. Well, I'm not going to click on it right now because there are a ton of them. Okay, nice site. And again, uh, you can register for this one too. Okay, free printables. Okay, readers, recycling. I'm a recycling door kit. <laughs> Recycle your door. Uh, jokes, a calendar for October. And I think each month they put up a new one. And they have some humor here. You're going to do, uh, you know, you're going to need this. Uh, 13 times teaching is like. The Walking Dead. I like that one. Uh, I actually stopped and read that one. Down below, they have some career advice and <laughs> life and well-being as well. This one you got to take a look at. Seven ways of coping with, I think it's pronounced Devilson, the dark evil vortex of late September, October, and November. You got to grab it. But anyhow, again, you know, staying up with what's going on, getting a few new ideas. You can register for uh, for the downloads for you know, and they'll you know every week or so you'll get a free free update and so forth. Recommend you do that. And with that, thank you for letting me do that, Raj. What we're going to do now is I'm going to change the presenter over to Mr. Roger, and he's going to introduce tonight's topic. Okay. Okay. Let me get something worth showing. Oh, that would be, <laughs> yeah, after what I've shown, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, you, you, you should see a, a kind of a place we're going to start uh, this, this discussion tonight. Uh, we mentioned our, you know, what's going on here with the webinar, and this came out of uh, tonight's topics uh, and focus on ELL resources or ELL students and so on, came out of a, a bit of a discussion and the obligation that uh, classroom teachers have for uh, newly hired teachers, teachers uh, in a certain category, are required to accumulate uh, 100 hours of professional development and track them, prove you've taken them and so on, which is done through our system with PDP and so on. But in addition to, in part of the 100 hours is that a specific percentage, and it depends as we learned a little while ago, on the number of ELL students that you have perhaps uh, in your classroom. So if uh, the overriding number is 15%, um, 
uh, 15% hours, in other words, 15 hours in this five year window that you have to accumulate your uh, professional development in these categories. So again, to be able to provide you, we don't, you know, you, you can uh, get these hours in any number of ways. Uh, the convenient way we think is here uh, doing these uh, Sunday night webinars an hour or two at a time and accumulate uh, uh, courses, uh, credits to fulfill your obligation. So that's that's where we are doing this and uh, Gene and I have been talking about doing um, oh uh, on a fairly regular basis uh, as a specific topic working with the Teacher Resource Center and the director Karen Wagaman um, we need to include in the title of the webinar a specific reference to ELL resources and so on so that can uh, help you um, take credit and get credit for attending uh, this and any of the other ones. Uh, and again, how that is all done, it's all the mechanics of the Teacher Resource Center, PDP, and so on. Uh, we urge you strongly to keep records of uh, your attendance in the Sunday night webinars, uh, the emails that you get uh, confirming your registration, because the title would be in that as well, but more specifically, the follow-up email to thank you that uh, indicates that you, you did attend the webinar and the follow-up surveys that you get uh, uh, after, the, after the webinar closes, you'll get a, a little thank you note and so on. So just a, a little bit of administrivia, I think they used to call that. Uh, thinking back to uh, ELL, ESL, we talk a lot about these. You know, these are acronyms, of course. And Gene mentioned the personal learning networks, the PLNs, and uh, and so on. Um, just a, a bit, bit of background here. We're talking about um, ELL resources. Uh, the ELL, English language learners, are the students you may have in your classroom who are not native English speakers. The ESL, um, is my understanding, that is the name of a program uh, that districts must provide students who are learning to speak English as their second language, uh, English as a second language. So uh, within our district and within uh, most districts to a greater or lesser extent, we have uh, ESL teachers who work specifically with students who uh, come to our district, not native English speaking students. I'm going back uh, quite a few years when I was in the classroom at uh, LaSalle Senior High School and then subsequently uh, at Niagara Falls High School, we have uh, we had an ESL teacher who would communicate directly with the, the teachers who's, who would have one or more of these students uh, in our classroom. And then we would be coordinating our curriculum with uh, the ESL teacher for support uh, and going back and forth. It, it was... Uh, never a formally structured uh, procedure, as I recall, and which may, have, of course, have changed uh, since those dark days when uh, of the night, late 90s. Um, but anyway, we, uh, the teacher, he and I would get together and I would explain what uh, literature we're doing or what we're writing about, what the topics and so on. And then he would work uh, with uh, particular students who may have been in my classroom within his pullout arrangement where he would meet with these kids um, a couple times a week and uh, like as a, maybe a study hall with him and so on. And it worked very well. And I never really understood it uh, from my perspective that it was really a formal program. And it certainly didn't have the kind of accountability that it now does with these kinds of uh, requirements that we're required to have. But uh, the, the basic understanding is uh, we have an ESL program and ESL teachers within our district. Um, as uh, learned earlier uh, at the elementary prep and high school level. And I do not know, and I'm going to try to find this week, maybe what our total uh, ESL population is uh, in Niagara Falls. And uh, 
again, there are neighborhood schools in Buffalo and in the area uh, surrounding districts that have uh, pockets of students uh, who fit in the, the need for extra instruction for uh, learning and working within the English language. We mentioned that there are some handouts tonight. Again, there are four of them. The one that you're looking at uh, on the screen right now is one I put together. And these are, as I indicated, these are just some ELL resources. If you stick with us uh, over the rest of the evening, but in the coming weeks when we do this again, I, there are a number of really excellent resources that uh, classroom teachers can draw upon for uh, ideas and uh, support in working with ELL students. Again, probably working with an ESL teacher in your school if you happen to be uh, in one of those schools that has this population. I think the district tries to uh, direct students to schools at the elementary level where there is an ESL program. Uh, there is uh, ESL at both of the prep schools as well as at Niagara Falls High School. So it's distributed around the elementary level specifically, and then as they move through the grades, uh, there are programs there. So, and this has grown over the years. When, as I mentioned, when I was working at the high school, uh, there was just a, a single secondary level uh, ESL program and one that came into being at the elementary level. And I think at the time, because it was brand new and so on, that involved travel between disc schools and so on, uh, which again, as the population grew, the, the need grew as well. Uh, so we're looking at ESL and ELL. And what can you do if you have uh, uh, an ELL student or students uh, in your classroom? Again, one of the uh, tools we're gonna look at uh, shortly is one that you can use with all of your students. In particular, this group, uh, but one that um, has, I think, a lot of application for um, a lot of students. If you are, are aware of it and you know it and you use it, you can certainly apply it. So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit what that looks like. Um, in the uh, handout that I have here, I'm going to quickly jump over to the internet. The one, one of the ones that's um, down towards the bottom is called Deep Dive. English language learners. And this is a link. If you download the document onto your computer, the links will be live within the document. Um, this is this will take you to the teaching channel, which is a popular resource for uh, for a number of years for a number of subject areas, curriculum, uh, help, and so on. I'm gonna jump out there and see if I can go to the teaching channel. This is where I grab that graphic. But this is that website that has uh, a lot of uh, background information. And then as you get down towards the bottom of it, a number of resources. The nice thing here is that these v resources are uh, short videos and more and more of them. We're giving you probably way more than you'll ever use, uh, references and so on. But uh, this I found to be very current, to be uh, certainly worthwhile. One of the ones, it's even actually mentioned here, and it's also listed in the handout. Uh, this gentleman that Gene and I have used for a number of years as a resource and reference to uh, a number of other areas. He is a practicing ESL teacher uh, out on the West Coast, and he's been uh, putting out a number of resources, some terrific ideas for a number of years, not just in ELL, but uh, a lot of it in English language arts learning and so on. Um, having been an English teacher, a ELA teacher, uh, I find his resources uh, uh, especially helpful and useful and uh, quite informative as well. So again, th this is a link on uh, the document uh, that is one of our handouts. And then, as I just mentioned, this uh, Larry Berlazzo, uh, his resources are excellent. And we'll be touching on those probably with a little uh, 
stronger look in the coming weeks, as he mentioned some things. What I want to talk about is uh, the, one of the, these tools that we're talking about, and that's another one of our handouts. Uh, actually, it exists in uh, the document that you're looking at, uh, this resource right here. Uh, you're looking at a Microsoft Word document. And we have talked about this tool in the past. In fact, you're going to hear a lot more about this tool in the coming weeks with another initiative that uh, the district is involved with. Um, and it's just one of a number of just again, just looking at the ribbon and the tabs, you'll notice some tools that we have talked about. Gene, we've talked about uh, the dictation tool. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about some of these uh, other tools as well. And I want to take you to um, another document. And this is it's called I'll, I'll change. I'll show you how to get there. And one of the handouts will take you through kind of a how to use this. A uh, specific tool, and it's called. It, this is you're looking at um, Microsoft Office Word 316, and the tool is called the Immersive Reader. So I got there from my home tab, go all the way down to where it says View, and in the View tab, you have a, a number of options. The one that we're concerned mostly with is something called the immersive reader. In some other environments, and part of its history has been, um, the immersive reader was also called, and still is in some versions of these programs, called learning tools. They are pretty much exactly the same tool. It just kind of depends on what version of Windows you're using and what edition of Microsoft Office products, specifically Word, but these tools are available in a number of other products that we'll we'll be looking at uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and then, it, but it's called the Immersive Reader. And when you click on the Immersive Reader in this document, you totally change the presentation of this document. Uh, I'll do it quickly, but then I want to bring up. Um, actually, I'm going to do it now. I want to bring up the the other document that uh, might make more sense to you. Uh, again, we're still in the, uh, the desktop version of Microsoft Word, the downloaded version. On your school computers, of course, you have Office 365. You all have accounts to that. We're going to take a look at what this looks like in that environment in a minute. And you have the installed version of the Microsoft programs, of mainly Word is probably the one that you're most familiar with, but of course there's PowerPoint and Excel and some of the other ones. If you're working with students, this I took from, I believe it's a fourth grade uh, lesson in our Journeys reading books in the, uh, in the district. Um, I don't know, I, I, again, I grabbed this off uh, online, but I think the story is called Because of Winn-Dixie. And as we typically do in ELA and in uh, the elementary level, we work with vocabulary, we, we work with spelling words, we work with uh, language in, in a number of ways. But this may be something that uh, ELL students uh, have uh, a need for some extra support and assistance. But it can also work well to the advantage of all of your students, whether or not they have an issue with reading, um, it just helps take a little bit of, uh, uh, well, I guess the phrase is a deeper dive into uh, some of these tools and so on. And they are really just very clickable. So here we have a open Word document. It may be something you work with online in your class. You may have distributed this. Like I said, I'm gonna show you in Office 365 what this looks like in a Teams environment. But if I again uh, go to the View tab and I change the view here to bring up the ribbon that shows my immersive reader tool. So I click on the immersive reader. When you click this on, you'll notice there's a major change in the presentation of the document. This is still that same document. It just kind of dropped it into this other environment. Now, 
with the immersive reader, I can very simply just read aloud. It will, if I put the cursor where I want, you won't hear this, but if you were to do this uh, on your own, you would hear the text being read. It's called read aloud. This is its basic, simplest, uh, most useful tool. Students can then hear, as if this is a vocabulary list or perhaps a, uh, a spelling list and so on. You can hear, the student would hear the words being read. So if I click on the read aloud button here, you may have noticed up in my quick action toolbar, I have the tool there as well. And that's for a, a, a different tool that we'll explain in greater depth later on um, and have looked at it from time to time. But I'm gonna click on the loud button. And up in the upper right hand corner here, you'll see some fairly familiar, you know, kind of up out of the way, uh, your very familiar play buttons. Play, and then you can go back to a previous, and then you can go to the next. Over here, um, you have the, I'm gonna bring my, I have to go back into read aloud again. Uh, you have some settings that you can change that help change the environment of what you're looking at. For some students, this may or may not be um, something that you maybe talk them through or just show them that they do exist. One thing that research has shown with students who have reading disabilities, or uh, again, perhaps an ELL student, is something called, you know, uh, we can change the line focus. And now students will only see what they want to see a line at a time. And I can turn this on and off by clicking this little button here up in the ribbon menu. I can decide how many lines do I want at a time? One, three, five, or none. I can change, for contrast sake, the background. Again, research has shown that for students who are struggling readers, that this uh, white text on a black background, especially students who may uh, have you know, a form of dyslexia, this uh, makes uh, comprehension and understanding words themselves um, much easier to deal with. So then within changing the page, page color, you can change the width, you can change the words. If it's, it's a spelling list or vocabulary words, I can display the words in their syllables. Notice a slight change down here. Most of these are single syllable words. Okay. And then they can be read aloud here as well. Uh, we can change, again, the line focus. Let's do three at a time. And as we go cycle through the list. And again, and all of this would be so students could hear it, each of the words being read. If you notice over here on our control panel for the uh, play, pause, etc., there is another tool called settings. This one is kind of taken over. Uh, most of the software that we're using now is that little gear symbol, very difficult to see here, I think. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can enhance that, but let's click on the settings symbol. And here we can change uh, the voice. It might make more sense to have a, maybe a, a little girl, a female student, hear it read in a female voice, or you can change it to, uh, a male voice and so on. And the way to get in and out of the immersive reader is right here, it's obvious in the ribbon up here, is the on and off button. I'm going to close the immersive reader now and it immediately takes me right back to the, the document that we're working on in our word processors, okay? I'm going to now go into I think I'm going into my 
Microsoft Office 365. I went into my Microsoft Teams, and here is pretty much the same, um, pretty much it is, it is exactly the same uh, tool, only it looks a little different because now we're in the online environment. But as we talked about uh, a moment ago, uh, there's a, some slight differences here, but if we now go into the View tab and I click on the Immersive Reader tab here, you're going to see it presents itself just a little differently with some additional options that I think you will find useful and I think your students will find useful. And then again, we're in the Office 365 environment. This could be a OneNote notebook or this could be a document that is simply if you're in the to teams you push out to your students and it might be lesson one this is a vocabulary list because of Gwen Dixie and so on uh, I gave a little a couple of little additional instructions here but here we are if you're clicking on the word itself Here's a, I'm going to show you how to toggle this on and off. The individual word could be read, and there is a picture dictionary. So let's say, take a look at how we got there. Okay. Now, in the immersive reader, I have some options available in both. I can change the size of the text. Some students benefit from a larger text that so they only see the words themselves. This is done not by you, the teacher, but by the individual student. So you, there's probably some time where you want some direct instruction on how to activate these tools um, in your Teams environment and in OneNote. You can increase the spacing. Now this is it toggles on. This is simply on and off. This little slider switch. I can increase the spacing. That is the distance between the words. Maybe make them easier to comprehend there. I can change the font. I have three choices here. For some reason, and again, research has shown that one of my favorite fonts is Comic Sans. This makes text easier to comprehend for students who have a form of dyslexia. So we can change that. I can change the background down here. This is a little different uh, location for that menu, as you can see. And I can show, well, we're not gonna get into any programming, but I can change it to a number of background text. Students, uh, uh, as we often have found out, like to get their uh, hands in a little deeper on some of these programs. It kind of, I guess, I guess, uh, play with some of the options here and see just exactly what they do. So now we've got the black background. I've increased the spacing. I've changed the font. Okay. I'm going to look at some grammar options. Now we didn't see that option presented in the Microsoft Word, the installed program version of the immersive reader, but the grammar options here are very interesting. Um, if you're approaching language study from a number of directions or just simple, simply parts of speech, I can say, uh, show me all of the nouns and I'd like them to be in the color purple. That is also changeable. I can change the color of the nouns. I can say, okay, let's make them all the nouns in a yellow or a gold color okay I can choose whether or not I want the, them to be labeled now it says they are labeled now they aren't right above each of the word was a little letter n noting that this word is a noun so if I click that on again notice there I can say let's say um, let's let's turn down the verbs verbs are in red and labeled and so on. So depending again on uh, what 
it is your objective, you can uh, have students or at your direction show the syllables, show the noun, show the, uh, the various parts of speech. Perhaps you're spending some time on that as well. Okay. Our next option over here are some reading preferences. Now, this, these are kind of interesting. Uh, previously, again, uh, here is our line focus. And that's just a simple on and off with this slider switch here. I can turn the picture dictionary on or off. Now, it's not 100%, but for ELL students, it may be very helpful. They're, uh, again, very early into uh, learning English. The picture dictionary may be something that we really want um, them aware. So if I click on Blade here, because I've toggled that picture dictionary here, if there is um, a way to represent, okay, Blade, and the student can click, or if you're going over this list, Maybe throw this up on your smart board as you go over and pre present the list. Or this could be a whole entire passage and so on. Uh, this will pronounce the word, okay? It will pronounce the word. Here's, we'll look at raft. It will represent it with uh, a, a picture as well. I'm going to go back and change the, uh, let's bring it back to at least a, black text on white background. Okay, so again, uh, these symbols here were text preferences, so the various grammar options, and now the underline shows that we are looking at some reading preferences. Notice down here, this is a different uh, option that we have in the online version of the immersive reader. Translate. If we're dealing with students who are whose native language is Spanish, I can say, let's translate this by word. So if I click on Blade now, notice here it will show me what the uh, Spanish translation of the word is, or again, if uh, maybe uh, an ESLT or somebody would have the words in Spanish, and then this would just simply be reversed. It would we'd be seeing the English translation. But the interesting thing I have found, and if you work with this at all, you're gonna find uh, I, kind of like a robot voice. Uh, it's getting better, but as these passages are read within the immersive reader, it's pretty good. Um, again, it's a little robotic, uh, and Microsoft is working on that. It's getting uh, better and better. But what I found very interesting was when I pronounce, when I said, want to hear it pronounced in Spanish, it seems to be, the pronunciation seems to be from a native Spanish speaking voice, not just uh, a robotic English voice and so on, which I thought was uh, kind of interesting. So again, we're, I can translate by word, notice here, Blade, I click on it, it translates it. Gray, it translates it. Now if I come back here, I say, you know what? What does this entire document look like in Spanish? I'm gonna click off by word, I'm gonna click on the entire document. It translated the entire document into Spanish. What you're gonna find uh, mind blowing, or at least I did, Translate, see it, there's a drop down here. These are all of the languages currently that Microsoft and the Immersive Reader will translate from and to, which I think is pretty amazing. A lot of these students are coming, are speaking their native language in their homes and coming to school during the day in an English language speaking environment. But this may be something um, where perhaps in uh, you know, a, a number of things, just communicating with parents at home, uh, you might find uh, very useful as well. 
a, a number of and this is this is growing and our option in Spanish is uh, Spanish Spain uh, the Spanish that is spoken in Mexico and so on so now we're going to go back to put it back into uh, English where we brought it in this little gear here now here is our play button looks a little different recall in uh, Microsoft Word these tools were in the upper right hand corner and it was just a simple play pause skip to the next and so on in this option here you would find if you could hear that this voice in this environment that is online office 365 the voice is much more natural sounding and on the gear you can choose between uh, uh, a male or a female voice. You can change the speed of the voice and so on. And again, with just a simple play button, which I think you know, is pretty amazing. There has been some articles written recently that they're using, <laughs> are starting to employ some artificial intelligence. You might see it, acronym AI whereby this is becoming uh, much more refined and much uh, less harsh on the ear of listening to a, a passage as it's read. Now, this is a simple uh, list of words, vocabulary list and so on. You could put a passage from a story here. Gene and I have talked in the past about a really interesting little application or app on our portable devices it's called the office lens we're going to go into that in a uh, a future um, webinar and talk about it but to oversimplify it perhaps is i can put the app it's free on my phone it's also available for android or apple uh, iphone devices i can take a picture of a passage from a textbook import it into my OneNote notebook, bring it up on this screen here, go into the immersive reader and that passage would be read with all of the tools that you see here available just with a simple click. So there's plenty of potential for doing something really kind of on the run. It takes seconds to do. Uh, and again, we'll demonstrate that uh, in a future webinar. The app is free. You have Office 365 at your disposal. And you can use it again in a, uh, Office Microsoft Word 316. And you can also use it in the Teams environment. Uh, I can go into my tools just, uh, just to quickly, because I'm pr almost wrapping up here, Gene. Um, there is one more handout. I'm going to show it to you quickly. Uh, this is one of the handouts, and it shows this is the version that we're looking at in Word 316, the installed version, and some options as well in uh, Office 365. Hey, just a reminder of the things I've just gone over uh, briefly, and I was. This is all in re kind of referencing using it on a vocabulary list, and I'm sure you will find many more uses for it um, as well. I'm gonna go back very quickly into uh, my Office 365. I'm gonna go, and this is already, you know, again, you have these available to you uh, already. I'm gonna go into my uh, OneNote notebooks, and just by way of example, um, this is the one that I've had the longest. As you'll see, it's accumulated uh, quite a few sections and quite a few pages and so on when it lines up. Uh, again, if you're at all familiar with OneNote, you know, this column here represents sections. Sections you might liken to a, uh, a file folder in a file drawer. And then the list on the right are 
uh, pages, documents within each file drawer. So I'm on Quick Notes here, and then over here are all of the pages that are in that section or folder, if you like to think of them as a folder. I have uh, a number of them here. Any one of these, um, if I can find one real quick, uh, I'll go into the learning tools one, which is again, another thing it's called. Okay, we're in OneNote here. And in OneNote, I'm gonna click on, this is from a Spanish newspaper, okay? I go into my immersive reader and it took, that was just something I copied out of a Spanish newspaper online and I have all of those immersive readers tools. So there's a, a ton of options here. To get out of the immersive reader when you're in this environment, either on OneNote or Teams, uh, notice there's no button up here or a ribbon at this point. There is a back arrow the exit arrow, I'm hovering over it, notice it says exit. I click on that and it brings me back to the document here. We're gonna take a look at these in much more depth in uh, future webinars, but I wanted you to see the, the versatility of it. And uh, again, I'm trying to find uh, a, an example. Uh, well, maybe this will show us some office lens options. trying to open that um, while well, I was using it here. I was using some things I collected, uh, something I uh, try to, by example, I found a passage in a book that I liked. I took a quick picture of it using Office Lens and I brought it uh, into my OneNote online so that I could then um, do something with it further on, maybe share it and so on. So, Gene, unless you have any questions, I think I've covered. I, I everything don't see that any was questions here, list. and I hope you, you know, it's, you've given us a really good okay. introduction as to some of the fantastic tools that are <laughs> involved in Office 365. There are a lot of things there that uh, we don't know about, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks uh, we can learn them and uh, be able to bring them to you. Yeah. Oh, I do uh, see a, a yeah, question yeah. right now. Oh, you yeah, just yeah, said, wow, good a, stuff. Yeah, well, good, yeah, yeah because uh, yeah. like I say, these are things that uh, we want you to know about. So hopefully, yeah. yeah. We'll and you already them. have these tools. Yeah. These are all yeah. there to, whether or not you've used them, uh, you now know uh, that they exist. And you can call upon Gene, you can call upon sure. me, uh, redo, revisit this. We can form study groups and so on. Uh, if you want, uh, you know, just a little uh, more guided practice in some of these things, we're certainly happy to do that. And you're going to be hearing more, more about Office Tools uh, coming up with the Immersive Reader um, in the coming weeks. And um, mm -hmm. later, you'll be hearing some of that, uh, maybe even on that November 5th, the PD day and so on. Okay. So, Gene, I can. Uh, if you do you that, can take I, it back. We're gonna, or, yeah, we'll switch things just a little bit, but it'll be doing a lot of what you're doing too. Hey, um, what I thought is this. Uh, you know, what I thought is, uh, you know, we've discussed Office 365 Word and the immersive reader tonight. I'd like to show you just uh, in the last couple of minutes a couple of sites. Dealing with vocabulary, Raj has been, you know, kind of stressing, you know, that one of the things that we need to work on is vocabulary. And <laughs> I went to this site. I've been going to this site for years, uh, and I don't know if you know about it. It's called Free Rice. And this is a great site because it works two ways for your students. First of all, it can help your students learn uh vocabulary and some other things we'll show you and also as they're doing this they are actually earning what they call free rice for the food banks of the world it says if you read over here for each answer you get right our sponsors will give the cash equivalent of 10 grains of rice to world food program who use it to change and save lives.
Now, you'll say, well, 10 grains of rice isn't much. So I'm sure everybody here knows exactly how many grains of rice are in a pound. Anybody? Well, I had to look it up myself. It's roughly around 20,000. Now, you'll say, wow, 20,000 grains of rice. But if you had a class of 20 students and you set up one site, maybe in your name and a password, as you can see, I'm logged in here. And each day when the students had a little bit of time, they went there and maybe they went over 10 words. Well, 20 times 10 is 2,000, and in two days, uh, 10 days, excuse me, I think that's the math, they will have earned a pound of rice, which adds up very quickly. And it's kind of fun. Let me show you how it works. You, right now, you'll see, as I said before, this is a new site, uh, and I am in the process of migrating my totals over. I had, I don't even know how many, but right now, uh, on my new site, I don't have that many. But basically, what you can do is click on, if you get yourself a, 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 get yourself an account, right now it says I've earned zero because I'm starting a new one, okay? There are different, now these are kind of uh, puzzling. Don't, if you click on game, you'll get, you'll go right to the game itself. Categories, there are a number of different games and the two that you might be interested in, English vocabulary, English grammar. Okay, we'll pick English vocabulary. Okay, I'm just going to go back here. Uh, and if I go here now, I can select a level. Okay, I'm going to pick easy. All right. And now that I've begun that, I can go to game. Grateful means. Okay, I'll say thankful. Now it should see, see I'm up to 3,000 now, okay? I, I just started it this morning. I went over and found out it was a new new site. But partner means, okay, and then they can, you know, and it will go over words again and again. So the students, listen means, see? so you can see, uh, I don't know what level, well, what would this be, Rod, do you think, fourth, fifth, sixth grade for easy? But don't hesitate. Don't don't uh, don't get upset if you think this is too hard for your students because they have something coming up for you too for the lower grades. Anyhow, uh, there's also let's look at the categories real quickly. English grammar. Okay, I'm on the easy now, which is correct. The trees is green. The trees are green. Some of these are pretty good. Okay, which is correct. The boy are happy. The boy is happy. Now, these might be good. And not only are you having the students play games, so to speak, they are also earning rice for this uh, organization. So they're actually helping the world out a little bit. Freerice.com, okay? I have that on my list. Hey, another one, uh, you'll say, well, that vocabulary is a little too hard. I ran into this one for the lower grades. This is kind of cool. It's called Learning Chocolate, a vocabulary learning platform. And it has a number of uh, words. And this actually probably would be good for ELL and ESL students who are learning English. Okay, uh, just for example, uh, let me grab expressions. Here's how it works. So pop it up and you will see some expressions here. They give you a <laughs> pretty poor uh, version of it, but each word is here. There is a uh, way of it. Uh, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> it will pronounce each word as you go through, as the students go through. Wink, and you can go through. The students can go through each of the words, listen to them, hear them. Now, up at the top, this is match up one. Well, they've kind of done that for you, okay? But I'm sorry, they give you this, and now match up one, I apologize. If you click on match up one, what they do is they'll have a sound here down at the, I'm sorry, down at the bottom. I heard the word cry, so I would drag it up and put it here. Yawn, I'm just gonna do two of them, okay? And when they get done doing them, they can check their answers to see how well they've done, one way. Okay, but they're not done yet. Match up two. Okay, here are 
uh, the words down here and you have to you know bring them up here okay blink okay wink oh that's oh I goofed up see you can change by doing this okay this is the uh, another one of them another way uh, check your answers again they can check their answers uh, match up three these are the sounds this is the word wink and you would have to bring it up here to match okay just to show you okay again and the last one and again you can do whichever ones you want maybe they're a little difficult fill in okay you would have the student would have to type in the words that might be a little hard for some students we can skip that and dictation they will say the word this one said smile the student would then write the word smile Wow that is quite you know interesting now there are any number let me just go home here of different categories here that you can do now you'll see uh, the one thing that you'll have to be careful of is there are a lot of ads around here this over here math practice see this little symbol up here ad choices that's an ad so be careful when you go into something like that because you're running into ads and you may not uh, want to uh, do that hey I've got a couple of other ones and I know we're not going to have time so maybe next time but uh, here's a real quick one readworks.org go in there check it out um, I've logged in myself you, know, you create a free see free content it's a little bit like res kids but it's a whole lot different and you can you know like you can do reading passages article a day sets you know Paired texts, things like this, an article a day. Okay, seabirds and wading gulls, they give you a grade level here, but if you want, you can then select a level here for articles, okay, uh, article a day. And they're, excuse me, they're very, very short. This is months of the year. Okay, this is for, perfect for calendars. You can print it out. You can, uh, if, you know, if you set this up and set up classes and so forth, you may not have this, but you can, uh, you know, print these out. You can use these with your students a month of the day. You can even, you know, click in parts of the day, go on to other associated uh, 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 readings with it. A lot, a lot of great information here. So, again, don't have time to really go through it thoroughly with you but hopefully maybe uh, pique your interest to for you to check it out a little bit okay and we hope that you will uh, uh, take a look uh, there's a last one that I'll show you real quick and it's at education world this is kind of cool we talked about vocabulary this is everyday edits you know editing can be a real pain but let me just click on October Halloween and it gives you a little uncorrected text you could copy this and put it in immersive reader if you needed to just paste it into word and then go to immersive reader and ask you know put it on the smart board have your students together correct it or you could ask you know ask them you know put it up there ask them to uh, correct it and then of course down below uh, we have oh, I'm sorry we have the corrected answer key okay up on top there's generally a a version you can download uh, notice it says printable this is a PDF many of them come in Word which makes it a whole lot easier for us you know we could just download it and then uh, load it into you know and then open it in Word to make it easier but this is another site that would have some really good little short activities that would deal with uh, editing vocabulary that would be very helpful and I think that making it fun in this way by using technology uh, the students might be more motivated to learn it more quickly and with that I think we've run out of time Raj so it's nine o'clock we want to remind everybody that within well I'm sorry not within in one hour uh, you will be receiving an email you don't have to stay up until it comes uh, but the email will say thank you for attending 
uh, yes, we do thank you for attending, but we would like you to do one other thing. We would like you to open that email because inside there should be a little link to a, a very, very short survey that ask a couple of questions and hopefully you know give us some free if some feedback uh, uh, t tell us you know whatever else you need tell us which way to go things like that would be very very happy to uh, to take a look if you have any questions put them down we'll be glad to answer those as well and with that if uh, you have any further uh, comments Raj if not we'll say good night to everybody Yes, uh, thank you again, uh, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, want to know anything more in particular of any of the topics that we've talked about tonight, uh, please let us know either directly or th through the survey that uh, Gene mentioned you'll be getting shortly. And other than that, have a great week. Yeah, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be sending you an email about next week. We're uh, straining out exactly the schedule and what we're going to be doing when. So we'll let you know soon. And with that, good night, everybody. Yes, good night, all.